You're listening to a message from Maranatha Church of Jacksonville. For more information, please visit our website, maranathajax.com. Hey guys, Pastor Brian here, and I have a quick story from our Acts readings this week that I wanted to go through with you guys. And here's the deal. So we're working through the entire book of Acts this summer, and we're kind of going multiple chapters per week and including those readings on our everyday emails. But I also just want to encourage you to just kind of read along. We're not moving at an incredibly quick pace if you read every day. I mean, a couple chapters a week like this. Last week, we've been going through kind of like three through five. And next week, we're going to do chapters six and seven. So it's not like a ton of reading, but I would encourage you to read it because there's so many details in all of these you know, chapters that we're not going to have time to cover totally. And it's also just familiarizing yourself with it. And, and if you read ahead, you read ahead because we're going to be talking about it next week. So it's not, I just encourage everybody to be reading along on your Bible. But the book of Acts is full of all these great stories of God doing these amazing things and healing people and just mighty, powerful things. And then all of a sudden in the middle of that is this really crazy story. Um, and I find it really challenging. Um, and here's the deal, guys. If you read the Bible, and you claim you believe it, and you don't ever encounter anything that's um, challenging or maybe rubs you the wrong way, then you're either just not being honest with what you're reading or you're not reading. <laughs> and so um, this is one of those stories for me. Because, And what, what it is, is a story from Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, and it's about a man named Ananias and Sapphira and what they do and what happens to them. So in the middle of this book of Acts, the church is beginning, God's doing all these amazing things, people are getting healed, all this great love and support and generosity is happening. And you see at the end of Acts Acts chapter 4, kind of this depiction, and it says, starting in verse 33, with great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them and brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed among, distributed to anyone who had need. And so what you see is that these guys just out of this encounter with God and the love they feel from God, and they just are filled with love for each other and want to take care of each other. And just out of the generosity that they've experienced from God. They're selling property and bringing this money to the apostles' feet and they're giving it to the people who need it. And it's this kind of amazing environment of people caring for each other and loving each other. And it's not like a law. Like they're not doing this because they have to. They're doing it because they want to. And in that's just such a, I mean, that's an amazing, that would be an amazing group of people to be a part of. <laughs> But in the middle of that, you find this man. So that's the end of chapter four. In the beginning of chapter five, you see this man and his wife, Ananias and Sapphira. They kind of get inspired by this environment and they move in to do something like that. And and so they kind of, they sell a piece of property. And um, it says here in verse one, now a man named Ananias together with his wife, Sapphira, sold a piece of property with his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. And then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and you have kept some of the money you've received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. And when Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And the and great fear seized all who heard what had happened. And then some young men came forward and wrapped up his body to carry him out and to bury him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you up carry you out also. And at that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. So you got, again, this amazing situation of God literally healing people and 
people being finding out about Jesus and all this stuff and people selling property and giving money to each other, like this amazing environment. And then in the middle of this, these two people lie and they're dead. You have to stop and think like, or ask some questions about, okay, like, couldn't they just say, gosh, guys, why didn't, why did you lie? And we know you lied. And that's not a, you know, like, and deal with it in less severe ways. I don't think the problem is that they kept back some of the money. I think that they could have kept some of the money and said, hey, I needed some of this to buy off this other thing or whatever, but here's the leftover I have and I want to give it to help people. I don't even think that that's a problem. I mean, in my opinion, it seems like it wouldn't be. I think the problem is that they lied. And verse four tells us this because Peter said, you know, didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? Like, it's like, it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. And then he says, what made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. So it's like trying to appear like you're doing something you're not was the problem, not what you did. He would have said, this is wrong for you to keep any of this. I think if it was that, if that was that case, it was the situation is they're trying to appear sold out um, and they're not being that, you know, so it's the lying to God that's the problem. And, um, but it still seems kind of severe that they both die to me, you know, and even like when you like, so like at the end of chapter four, you have all this great stuff about people sharing, then this story of them dying. And then literally in my Bible, the, ch- the heading over the next section says, the apostles heal many. And then it goes on about like how the apostles are healing people. And so um, I've struggled with this a little bit. And I, I went looking around and I found um, a theologian I really like named Craig Keener wrote uh, about this. And he wrote this. It is because they pretended to be what they were not. God does not want pretend revival. Hypocrisy can corrupt the entire movement, if not exposed and expunged, like a little yeast that spreads throughout the loaf or cancer that metastasizes throughout the body. Fake commitment can infect the entire community and turn a, the real revival into fleshly imitation revival, a toxic substitute for the real thing. So what's really going on is lying and holiness are the issue. And you don't play around with God's holiness. You see in the Bible several examples. I mean, God doesn't strike a whole lot of people dead throughout the Bible. It does happen. But you see in Joshua 7 when Achan keeps some of the plunder from Jericho that he's killed because of it, because God says, do not do that. And then um, you see Aaron's sons offering strange fire on God's altar. and they're, they, they're killed for that. And then when even like we talked about a couple of week ago, weeks ago, the guy named Uzzah who tries to steady the ark of God, which God has said, don't touch this. Uh, he gets killed. And, and these are upsetting things because it says even in that that David got upset when that happened. So it's not just upsetting to read. It's upsetting to encounter. But I don't think that God would have been angry with Anna and Sapphira if they had kept some of the money. Uh, to do something with, it's because they lied and they lied in front of other people and that God was concerned about this. And the lesson here, I think, is to to not play with God. Like, don't play with God thinking you're going to get away with something. You know, be honest because God knows the truth already before um, we even say anything. And so we're only fooling ourselves to think that we can fool God or other people, you know, other or his people. And this is a severe story. It's like God takes himself seriously. He takes, you know, his holiness seriously and he takes his church seriously. And we should as well. Knowing also that God is loving and kind and all these sorts of things. But because of that, you don't think you can get away with anything. God is serious. And here's Craig Keener. I'll read this to close. Um, He says this. Now, God striking people dead is not common in the Old Testament, and it's even rarer in the New Testament. This is the only example in the Gospels and Acts where God's character is regularly revealed in Jesus as he compassionately heals the sick and delivers those who are demonized. But it still has something to teach us, especially when we pray for revival. In deeper intensity with the Spirit, we become more aware of God's holiness and more aware of what it means to be consecrated to him. We desire to honor his holiness, to draw deeper in his presence, just as poison is bad for the body. Some things are spiritually toxic for our personal or communal spiritual welfare. A life or community sensitive to God's holiness will be allergic to spiritual toxins. May we desire even deeper holiness. And may those around us be drawn to such holiness that comes not by legalism, that's just fake holiness. It comes by the Spirit who reveals to us the holy and awesome God, maker of heaven and earth, who graciously, who has graciously chosen to dwell among us. And to that I say, Amen.